How's it going everyone? It's John again. Um, today I'm going to do a video on network automation. If you've kind of been following the buzz around the networking community, you'll realise that network automation seems to be the future of the profession. And Cisco Live are actually specifying that, or rather the speakers at Cisco Live are specifying that. In the future, Cisco are not really going to be just looking for network engineers, they're going to be looking for what's called a hybrid engineer. Now a hybrid engineer is essentially someone who understands networking, the protocols and best practices, but also understands uh, programming and network programmability. So essentially what I thought I would do was do a quick demonstration on how this actually works and what you can do and how useful it is in scaling up um, network configuration. Because as you probably remember or realize that like repetitive tasks of manual configuration are prone to error. Great example is manual configuration of IP addressing. How easy it is to simply put in the wrong mask or put in the wrong IP address or blah de blah. DHCP saves us here, actually is allowed, it allows us to scale up and to allocate IP addresses without error. Python programming takes that to a new level whereby you can actually configure um, your devices such as um, IP addressing, VTP, blah de blah, VLANs, everything, and scale up right throughout your network, propagate it out, and it will be error free and it will scale well. And you can also make adjustments very, very easily. So, you know, this is not an absolute prerequisite to learn as a network engineer, but in the future, looking forward, unless you want your skills to be kind of condemned to obsolescence, it's probably a good idea to get ahead of the curve on this and start programming now. Um, I will say, if there's any software engineers watching this video, this this uh, code which I write might seem a little crude. I will fully admit that I'm just beginning essentially in this stuff and I hope to get better and yeah, well let's kick on and do it then. Uh, okay, topology here. On the left we've got the 10 network, which is the 10.0.0 slash 24. On the right we've got the 192.168.1.0 slash 24. The switch is each of an IP address which corresponds to the switch name. So switch 1, for example, is 192.168.1.1. Switch 2 is 1.2. Uh, switch 3 is 1.3. And switch 4 is 1.4. So on and so forth. Um, yep, so let's just make a point of this. Um, because Python is such a ubiquitous and popular language, um, there is many uh, great code or many great uh, programmers out there rather who will essentially allow you to see their code. They publish it on many, many sites and you can just use that as a template and just re-engineer it and modify it to fit your needs, which is what I've done here. So for example, what I'm going to, I probably should explain what I'm going to do actually. <laughs> um, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to telnet from the PC into switch 1. I'm going to configure it as a VTP domain with a VTP domain name as John and configure a loop to write in 100 VLANs, each named after the number. So VLAN 1 will be called VLAN 1, VLAN 2 will be called VLAN 2, so on and so forth. That will then propagate down to the rest of the switches through VTP as it ordinarily would. However, I'm then going to telling it into each of the devices and configure them to be VTP clients apart from switch one which will remain the server. So it might not be the most practical real world example but it's just a quick way to show just how easy this stuff is and how it can probably make your job a lot easier. So let's look at this template I've got. First thing I did was Google Python telnet and this is the code. Now, if you don't really understand Python, I'll give you a very, very rough and crude primer on what this actually means. The host is going to be where I'm logging into. In this case, it's going to be 192.168.1.1, which will be the server. The user is going to be the raw input. That's going to be what will appear on the screen. I've changed that a bit to read something else similar. And what I enter in response to that will be saved under the variable user. A password, it will save that and it will then turn it into that. It will then, the script will read until it sees the word login. Now if you know um, Cisco devices, uh, they don't actually say login, they prompt you for a username, so I've actually had to change that, make a modification such that it reads, read until username. The script will then know to write in the user, which is the variable which you told up here in response to that question. It will then do a backslash n which is going to be essentially a carriage return that will be your enter key 
Now, the next thing it says, if a password is prompted, which it will be, it will read until it sees the word password on the console, and then afterwards it will pass in the password, which you uh, sent it up here, and then do a carriage return. The next part is telling it, right, ls. Now, ls is a Linux command that's not um, actually relevant here. I've changed that to the actual uh, Cisco commands, which I need to use, which is going to be conf t, vtp, domain, uh, john, and then go through a loop to create the VLAN, so on and so forth. So that's a rough primer on what's happening, and let's just have a look and see what we're doing. So we'll go into the PC first, and we'll do ifconfig if zero. We'll give ourselves an IP address of the 10. We'll do the netmask of slash 24 and bring that up. And we'll do root add oh, default gateway. And let's try and ping that. So we've got a response to the default gateway. We'll ping. The router, yep, and let's just try to turn it into one of the switches for good measure. Yep, okay, so that's us. We can actually turn it in now. Before I do anything, I probably should actually show you that there's no actual configurations on the actual switches, otherwise, this is completely redundant. <laughs> so, I'll do a show VLAN as you can see, we've got the basic defaults. Uh, pick another one, switch four, and we'll do a console, we'll do show VLAN. And again, show VTP status, there is no domain name configured. So, with that, let's have a look at what we've got here. So, console, and we'll do a touch and we'll call this one VLAN loop. And we'll nano it to edit it. And on my notepad here, I've actually got these saved, which I've done a bit earlier on. So, let's just right click, copy that, and we'll... Write that out, save, exit, and we'll now go back in. Okay, so, as you can see here, we're importing our basic library. The host is going to be the 192.168.1.1, which will be the actual server. I've changed this to read welcome to telnet, enter your credentials. This could read absolutely anything as long as you know what it's prompting for. And um, the username, which we changed from login, uh, it will pass in the user which I will type, which will be John, if a password, which there will be, it will be Cisco, and now we'll go down to the actual commands which I've written. Now the commands I've written here are conf-t for global configuration mode, tn write, vtp domain name john, and then here is the loop. For i in range 1 to 101, now if you know Python, that actually will mean 1 to 100. And what it's going to do, it's going to do tn write, which will write the word VLAN, plus str i str is essentially converting the i which are the numbers 1 to 100 from an integer to a string and then do a carriage return so it will do vlan 1 vlan 2 vlan 3 so on and so forth and it will also um add in tn write name vlan and it will also use the actual the format of vlan 1 will be called vlan 1 vlan 2 will be called vlan 2 so on and so forth and then to End that, we'll do an end, exit, and then we'll actually print out all the actual text onto the console of the Linux box. So let's just try and do that just now then. Eh? So we'll do Python, and we'll do VLAN loop. Welcome to Telnet, enter your credentials, John. Cisco. Now this will take a little bit of time, because essentially it's going to go and program 100 VLANs. So it's going to take a little bit of time, but... We'll just give it a minute and it should probably work. Let's just take a peek into one of the switches and just do uh, show VLAN. Okay, as you can see, it's actually creating the VLANs. We're up to 71 just now. It won't be long until it's completed. Seventy-four.
81. So that's almost done. Um, and like I say, it's also going to configure the VTP domain name of John. So then all that VLAN information will propagate down to these switches here. And like I said, these switches will now still remain as VTP servers, but now in domain name John. The next script is going to configure all of these ones here into client mode and leave S1 as a server. So let's go back into the PC and see if we've got that done yet. Um, where are we? Yep. So it's printed it all out in the console here, as you can see here. Once it was completed, I ran the scripts and entered the telnet password and it did all this automatically. So now if I go into another switch, say switch 4, and do show VLAN, it's now configured with all these VLANs. Now again, this is probably not the most real world example. Using 100 VLANs is a bit excessive, but it's just to demonstrate what you can do. Now let's just see these. Let's just have a look here. So we'll do console to number three and we'll do show VTP status. Now, domain name John, it's been changed to that, but it's in server mode. Similarly, on um, switch five, show VTP status. Again, similarly, it's still on server mode. So the next script, let's go and do that one then. So we'll jump in back to, what are we? Let's close some of these a bit, kind of make it a little bit more user friendly. So the next one we'll do, we'll do touch, and we'll just call this one, what, VTP client, and we'll nano it. And this is the second script I've got here. So let's just grab that. And copy you, right click, we'll write out, and exit, nano we'll back in. Right, so this one now says, I've actually put the username up here outside of the loop to make sure that we're not going to be looping and get the same prompt every time it goes into a new um, telnet session. So the credentials are saved first. Now we're going to go through the loop. The loop is going to be this time is for I in range 2 to 10, which is going to be actually 2 up to 9. And it's going to be the host is now going to be 192.168.1. Plus the string of I and I is going to be dot. 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, 1.5, up to 9. It will then tell me in to that host. It will read the script until it sees the word username. It will then pass in the user, which is our variable, which we've saved up here from the what we entered. Carriage return, if it's a password, which there will be. Um, read until we're prompted for password. Pass the password in. And then we go down here. And it's just simply... TN write, conf t, carriage return, VTP mode client, end exit, and then print out all of the text. So let's just exit that and we'll run the Python script then. So we'll do VTP client and we'll now do John Cisco. And now you can see switch 2 has been configured, switch 3, switch 4 has been configured, switch 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. That's us. Pop in here. Let's have a look at switch. Grab switch 4 perhaps, and we'll do show VLAN, like I say, we've got all the VLANs there, but now if we do show VTP status, this is now in client mode. Similarly, switch 9, show VTP status, oh. show VTP status, it's in client mode, however, like I say, we missed this one out in the loop. So we've got VTP status. This one remains a server. And they're all in the, in the domain of John. They all now have configured 100 VLANs in a certain format. So can you imagine what this would be like configuring this uh, with manual configuration? How easy it would be to actually make an error. In this case, with network automation, things are much, much easier. Large networks where the scalability might be an issue, this can solve a lot of those problems and there really is a lot more applicability than what I've demonstrated here. This is just the basic bare bones of what you can do with network automation. 
Um, so uh, what I will do is, if you're actually interested in learning more about this, I hope to do more videos as I learn myself. But a good heads up is to go to a channel called David Bombo. He's a CCIE and he's pretty much a network wizard and he's quite generous in the fact that he puts up a lot of his content for free. His stuff is far better than what I've got here and he's also got a Udemy channel or a Udemy, uh, what, what would you call it? A Udemy account where he's got lessons on there. You can go and buy his course on that and I would highly recommend that too. So yep, that's the end of the video. It's just a basic kind of intro to what network automation looks like, what you can do with it. And yep, that's the end of it. So I'll see you guys soon. Bye.